ready in cinco, cuatro, tres, dos. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at? Christina P. Uh, uh. <laughs> Thank you, Native. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta get the meows. Up. You got those meows. What up, moms? It's Christina P., the main mommy. With me is Nadav. Today, we're just gonna do free balling. We're gonna open these lines up. Yeah. How you feeling, homie? I'm feeling great. Brew, you had one of your dates already. I'm not gonna go into detail. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wait till I have all three of them, and then I will report on all of them. I'm gonna try and edit a little montage together so everyone could see how how uh, how I work in the office. I am so <laughs> excited to hear all these juicy details. Uh huh. Uh, oh i love sattva mattress company because i sleep on a sattva mattress every night with my beloved husband tom saguera and we've slept on sattva mattresses for the last i don't know five or six years i discovered them on my own and on a lark and i ordered my mattress they called me made sure that they could set up the delivery and it was timely the product is unbeatable i sleep on a luxury firm king why because the price is right uh they have really 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 great deals and now you can get 225 dollars off the purchase of your next mattress if you go to sattva.com slash ymh that's s-a-a-t-v-a dot com slash ymh also Excellent customer service. You're never going to feel like, oh my God, I just bought a mattress online. What's going to happen to me? They take excellent care of you. Uh, organic cotton. It's a product. They'll come and set up the mattress and take away your old one. I mean, it's unbeatable. Don't mess around. Get your Sattva mattress. S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash Y-M-H. $225 off your next purchase. Check it out. But before we get rolling today, I have to say that I saw the Beastie Boys documentary. As mm. you know, I'm a huge fan of the B-Boys. Yeah, how'd you like it? I got, I tell you, I've been in a funky mood the last week. Like the, the quarantine depression hit me. And mm-hmm. I think we all have that, you know, you go through periods of malaise where you're like, I'm not happy, I'm not sad, I'm just blah. Mm. But that doc brought me out of my funk and I was so happy. If you guys are, if you remotely love the Beastie Boys, uh, check out the documentary. It's on Apple. It's an Apple original. Mm. And what I really loved about them is they had friendship and love between all three of them, which was, it's so rare in a band where like people get along really well and, and they seem like good buddies and, and they're having a good time. So check it out. It'll put you in a good mood. Oh, it's just a nice all friend buddy, yeah. buddy cop flick. Well, I kind of like that. Like why work with people? I've always believed that in my life. I surround myself with people I enjoy. Yeah. My husband, you, oh. the boys in the booth. Like I yeah. don't work with turds. <laughs> so like. Yeah, I don't understand that. Like there's like comedy <laughs> duos or any type of duo where it's just like, hey, did you know th- like Sherlock and Holmes fucking hated yeah. each other? Yeah. That's well, one person, isn't it? Yeah, Sherlock, Sherlock and Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Watson. Uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Well, Calvin. <laughs> uh, did you know that Fred and Ethel on I Love Lucy hated each other's guts? Huh. Hated each other. But that also kind of seemed like that on the show. Like, it right. looked like Fred was always one second away from, like, <laughs> physically abusing Ethel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what made it so fun to watch. Yeah, but boy, he loved his friend Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so another thing I'm experiencing this week, Nadav, and I don't know if you can relate because I don't, you don't have children, but uh, I just, I've been really thinking about the nature of the relationship one has with their children, especially now in these times of close quarters all mm-hmm. the time, is that it's uh, it's complicated. Like it's, um, it's, there's no other relationship in my world where I simultaneously love this person with all my heart like so much that it pains me so much that if God himself were to come down and be like, Christina, in order to save your children, you must die now. I'd be like, yeah, where's the knife? I will fucking stab myself and I will do it without hesitation to save my children. Uh-huh. And then at the same time, I'm so fucking annoyed. You're like, take them first. <laughs> <laughs> like it's to the point where you feel, it's very bizarre sensation in in your body even Mm -hmm. for me like i go from love to like this visceral like i gotta run i gotta get out of here you're the most annoying 
person in the world. And I get that sometimes with Tom, uh-huh. sometimes. But with children, it's like, it's pretty much every minute. Well, yeah, I, I feel like in your life, there's really no person in the world that you're like, oh, I could be with this person 100% of every minute of every waking day. You no. need a break. You need some you time. Yeah. Even yeah. from your kids. It, well, especially from your kids. And and that's the thing is that they just, they're it's like to be attracted and repulsed sometimes at the same time. It's like a sushi buffet where you're like, that oh. sounds like a good idea. See, no, now you're not. speaking my language. <laughs> now I understand the internal struggle that you're going through. Right. Yeah, because before you're always just like, God damn. When you're not at the sushi buffet, you're like, fuck, I wish I was at the sushi buffet. But yeah. after that first plate and a half, you're like, I want to kill myself. Exactly. <laughs> so you're saying that having children is like being a plate and a half in yes. at a sushi buffet. A- a hundred percent. All right. Now I get yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Now I, maybe the analogy makes sense. Now I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's now like, I understand the Because it, it's an inherently good thing. Sushi is an inherently good thing, much like having children. But there's a capacity <laughs> and a limit. And also you start second guessing your decisions like that last piece of... Hamachi smell yeah. bad. I'm like it's a buffet, so it's hanky. There's You're like, not... yeah, that last plate is going to kill me. <laughs> yeah. It's a gamble, right? You're like this one, yeah, and and same with children. Like their wires could be crossed, and you could grow up to be a drug addict, scumbag, douchebag who robs you and murders you. You don't know, right? It's a gamble. It's all a gamble, right? And you can't really <sighs> take. I mean, I can't this really is the perfect analogy because yeah. you can't take a plate of sushi back to the buffet no you could just leave it at the table <laughs> and hopefully someone will pick it up <laughs> which you don't want to do yeah just like throw trash on it and yeah. be like this is something to be taken away no. but i don't think you could do that with your kids no <laughs> no and i remember one time when i was a little girl my mom and i would go to this chinese buffet in the valley mm-hmm. and i saw a woman one time come in and she goes i got food poisoning from your buffet can i have my money back and they were like, no. Bitch, you know what you're doing here. Right. Like, <laughs> but the same goes for children. There's no money back. Like, you get, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just hope that the soup yeah. is okay, the genes are good. And, and it won't make you sick. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't take your baby back to the doctor and be like, this one's bad. Give me a yeah. different one. They'll be like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> yeah. It's the one relationship that is forever. And like they annoy and that you love them simultaneously. I guess I just have a hard time holding those two emotions. Con- it's it's so contradictory. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't make sense to love and to also be like, I can't, I can't. Not today, Jesus, you know? <laughs> but anyway, um, so let's take calls. Let's just roll into it. I'm sure we've got a lot of uh, people who want to get some stuff off their chest in this time. Jeez. Yeah, let's do it. How our much f- longer are we going to be in this state of purgatory? Our, our first call is from Gladys. And Gladys, what is going on? Hi, Gladys. Mommy, are you there? Hi. Hi, sweet Hi, love. Oh, I'm here. How are you doing? Where are you calling Hello. me from? Hi. Bayonne, New Jersey. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Are you, uh, so how, you've been inside and, and you're with your kids for forever now how do you feel yeah yes well one let's get this out the way um i love your face you love what it's a fact you're great i love your face oh thanks thanks gladys you're very sweet i appreciate that for sure here's the question go ahead so i have two kids and i would like to know if there is any return policy the 14-year-old can stay, but the 8-year-old got to go. What's going on? He's just got to go. House on crazy vibes And today. I will not say his name. Yeah. I will not say his name because if I say it more than once, he appears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that one, Do not ask that to me. Yep. Yep. That, you know, it's, yes. it's so I weird. Calling you. Yeah. Is that we were mm-hmm. just, I literally just a second ago was saying that Children are like a, a sushi buffet where you, it sounds like a good idea. And then you go and you're like, oh, shit, I, I think I ate too much. I can't take this all back. This might make me sick. Like, and ha- then it's all diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Glad right. you're on it. I'm just saying. Well, that's the thing is that how do we deal with what? these emotions, these conflicting emotions of you love them so much and then they just annoy the crap out of you all day, every day? Oh, and now I can't even hear the word. Oh, hold on, I I get like um I gag when I hear the word mom. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's 
he's half Hispanic, so he's like mom, mommy, mommy, yeah. mom. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I did not know that I sent my eight-year-old to uh, college with all this <laughs> homeschool stuff. Yeah. Where now Google is my main source of uh, information. Well, here's my theory on this homeschooling nonsense, okay? Nobody, none of us are really qualified unless you're a teacher to do all this. If that kid gets through Mm -hmm. this mildly, like, listen, any attempt at educating your kids is good enough. Don't even try to, who gives a shit? What do they miss out on? A semester? Big deal. I missed out on a semester of college. I think I didn't go to school. Yeah. I think all of ninth grade, I just decided not to go to. He's going to be fine. They're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. Yeah. Gladys, cut yourself some slack. Are you drinking yeah. alcohol? Are you taking CBD? What are you doing to cope with this? All of the above. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you need. <laughs> Whatever you need to, to help you and- stay at equilibrium, Gladys. Yeah. For real. And then not only that, like sometimes I think I'm alone, but uh, my sweet, sweet, sweet boy hides in my closet Mm -hmm. and just likes to pop up random times. Mm -hmm. Like when you're dressing and stuff? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That or I might be trying to take a dump and uh, he just Mm. pops right in there. He learned how to pick the lock in the bathroom. (laughs) He learned how to pick the lock? There's no escape. (laughs) They do. They're smart. Yes. Oh, is it is it the one that with mm-hmm. the hole that you try and like poke through? Mm-hmm. Mm. L- Change listen, those locks, yeah. Gladys. Gladys, I haven't taken a dump alone in uh, four years. <laughs> <laughs> I have a full yeah. audience. I got a dog. Over the days. Yeah. Remember that time? Remember just uh, being bored? Don't you love all these non kid having quarantiners that are like, I'm so bored. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, where the fuck are you? Let me sa- let me ship my kid off to you, and then you come back and you tell me what's going on. <laughs> Atta girl. Fuck you. How about that? <laughs> exactly. It's I, like shut yeah. your mouth. Oh, it's disgusting. And all, all, all and all the oh my goodness, the worst thing about quarantine is all the challenges that are uh, coming up and stuff like that. I can't even. I can't go online anymore. No, get your life. People are always asking me. It's a lie. I started doing it. Yeah, no, don't. People ask me to participate in these stupid challenges or can you make a video for this? I'm like, no, I'm doing (laughs) enough. No fucking. I don't need to annoy anybody. I'm all full up. Yeah. Gladys, do you have a question or did you just want to share your your feelings today? Because I think that's actually valid because I think we're all feeling the same way, Miss Gladys. That was actually it. (laughs) One more thing that you guys um, have brought to my life mm-hmm. is my husband is also at home, mm. and all he talks about is your mom's house and two <laughs> bears in one cave. <laughs> nice, great, yeah. Well, are you listening to your that mom's I house? Thank you for that. I thank you for. You got it. Now, are you listening to your mom's house yet? Yes. Good girl. Okay. Well, then uh, keep milking him. Are you milking your spouse? <gasps> Uh, we try at least two to three times a day, depending. <sighs> wow, that's a lot of milking. Good for you. Are you enjoying <laughs> yeah, that? Well, uh, we are bored. Yeah, bored in the house, in the house, bored. Hell All right. yeah. Well, enjoy your effing, and thank you for calling, and stay uh, inside. And don't don't listen to oh, any challenges. Do. Thank you. All right, I love you guys. Thank you, guys. Bye, jeans. <laughs> You're sweet. Bye. Bye, mommies. I love you. Yeah, I imagine everybody has yeah, kids. I think, I think so. everyone's got uh, an internal Gladys going on right now. We're just I like, how so. do I get rid of these kids? <laughs> <laughs> but I know that Gladys loves, like, she clearly loves. Like, That's a thing. Yeah. And I think, too. I was That's exactly ha- what you said. It's yeah. like a, a, a balance. It's a balance. And I, I was having this discussion yesterday with a friend, and they're like, I'm just as happy to see them as I am to leave them. And I thought, oh, that's really, and that's so hard to admit to that latter part of the statement of like, I'm just as happy to be like, I'm out. Mom's got to go to the office and do something. All right. Who else we got? Okay. Let's see who we got. We got Paige from Iowa. Paige, what's hey. going on? Oh, you know, I, uh, I'm a mom of three. I recently, I just had a baby on oh. the 19th of March. Congratulations. Oh in the NICU. Oh, what's going on? So, um, 
Well, yeah, no, I just had a baby right. on March 19th, and she's in the NICU. She was born 11 weeks early. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is my third baby, um, first experience with the NICU, and I crashed into postpartum really hard. Mm. I don't blame so, you. So I was wondering <laughs> what other options besides meds and therapy would you have, you know, to help me, I guess, climb out of this forest, if you will. <laughs> well, so you, this is your third child. You said you had two more. Yeah, they're 10 and 8. 10 and 8. And and what is going on with your baby? So she's a, it's a girl, you said? the Your newborn? Yeah, yeah, I just had a baby girl. Mm-hmm. And I have a boy and girl at home, too. And what's her name? Her name is Adra. Adra. And what's going on? Is she, so she's 11 weeks premature. Does she have any, like, issues? Or what, what's going on? No, no, she's doing fantastic. She was just oh, early. Oh. And I, I oh, have great. Yeah. So I was oh. hospitalized for a week prior to her birth. And then, of course, all this virus crap broke out. So yeah. I'm, like, wondering if my postpartum has a lot to do with that, too. Yeah. But yeah, listen. I had also with my other, it's not this extreme. Yeah. I mean, look, I think the, the let's say this, the most primal thing that can ever exist in the world is a mother giving birth and holding that newborn and bonding with your newborn Mm -hmm. and you're not able to do that right now so it's understandable that you would be really messed up and really out of it i don't blame you now thank goodness your baby is healthy and when do you expect to see her again when when can she come home um well i'm with her now we're able to see her now it's just can't i can't come here with my fiance we can't come together and Mm. that's been kind of a struggle Mm, that Um, sucks but I'm I'm here with her now, and I'm just starting to stay full time with her um, because she's working on breastfeeding and things like that. So, can you touch um, her and stuff? Can you hold her? Yeah, it was just, yeah. I'm actually oh, I'm sitting with her right now in my arms. Oh, okay. Well, look. Then it's stressful to not have that baby home with you. It's primal. It's yeah. It's your most motherly instinct to take that baby home and start nesting and start tucking in and doing the newborn jam. So yeah, you're freaked out. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the aversion to getting on an antidepressant? Um, I've been on them before and I turn into a complete zombie. Mm-hmm. I do take an anxiety medicine now mm-hmm. um, and that seems to help like calm me a little, but it doesn't take away the everything else i guess what's <laughs> everything else what do you i get irritable and you're bad yes and normal well yeah. may- maybe that was just the the wrong medic i mean there's tons of options for for anti-depression yeah. medications especially, maybe it's just the wrong one and especially postpartum they're probably going to prescribe you something different than what you were on before you may want i mean just explore the option right. you don't have to go full zombie uh there's dosages they can put you right. on that just bring you out of the the haze that you're in right now I would highly recommend, and there's some things you can be on while you're breastfeeding as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say look into it, girl. And I know it's, I know it's so hard, uh, but look into that and mm. then, <laughs> you know, and just wait until you can take that baby home. I think you're, it's normal, but how you feel. I, I, I can't imagine feeling normal uh, having a baby in the NICU. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's definitely crazy and we're hoping her due date was June 3rd. We're hoping to be back before then just because yeah. she's doing so good. So I'm hoping that will definitely boost my momentum as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's an abnormal situation that you've never dealt with before. Your other two children weren't like this. So it's, right. it's unfamiliar and it's scary. And I would say, try to focus on the positive of she's healthy. You're healthy. Um, Mm. and this sucks for everybody. This is a Mm. bad time in our, and I think the harder, the harder we try to push away those bad feelings, the more they're going to dominate. So cry. Yeah. (laughs) Cry. What are you going to (laughs) do? You're going to fucking cry. You're going to drink when you can. (laughs) Yep. Uh, you're going to feel those. (laughs) Yeah. And you're going to get through this and uh, a year from now, it's all going to be a memory, but look into those antidepressants. Call your shrink. It can't, I can't hurt to ask. Yeah. Right. (laughs) <laughs> okay. all right all I right definitely i appreciate it yes good luck my love hang in there i yeah. swear to god it'll get better very soon yes all right all Thanks, right Tommy. okay Thank you, i love you jeans stay cool mom oh speaking of i forgot to pitch this but the main mommy shirt is now available oh, oh. can we google it can he does he know how to do that chris can you google something and put up the image yeah it's on merch method right yeah merch method.com slash tom segura 
Uh, the new shirt is I'm the main mommy, and I highly recommend getting it for Mother's Day, seeing as we can't visit our mothers. Um, there it is. Oh, There's three of them. Yeah. And I made one for men. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'd wear yeah. the shit out of that. Right, so I got one for dudes, and then a uh, gray oh, and hell black. Yeah. It's like a it's like a superhero it's shirt a, for moms. It's the dopest, right? I love that. I know. Finally, resolve the conflict in your house over who's the main mommy. You're the motherfucking main mommy. <laughs> Unless your husband also got a shirt. <laughs> shit, he ain't the main mommy. You're the main mommy, girl. Get that shirt. Oh fuck. All right, who else we got? We got Crazy Gladys. We got the second we lady. Pa- we got Paige. Oh, jeez. Let's see. We got. Who uh, else? Now we got we got Amanda with a grandma fail. Nice. Amanda, I hear you have a grandma fail. Yes. What up, Amanda? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. What's going on? All right. Um, so instead of a mom fail, this is a grandma fail. Okay. Her favorite two phrases on this earth were, I'll be a son of a bitch mm. or pee on him. Oh. And she told my three-year-old brother one day yeah. to just piss on her because I must have made him mad when I was 12 years old. Piss on her? So picture a 12-year-old girl. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm just getting all the info. You're gr- she said to okay. pee on. Yeah, I don't. We don't understand the saying. W- was she like Southern or yeah. Ukrainian or something? Uh, Ukrainian. I said pee on. <laughs> doesn't no, sound. Peace and sheep, it's... <laughs> no. Doesn't sound American at all. I am all. from the middle of Nebraska. Oh, okay, okay, mm, okay. okay. And so she said. So how would okay. she say the pee on you thing though? She said, "Oh, just go pee on him or pee on me." I piss on her. I piss on her. Mm. Oh wait, like go, like f her. It's like. She sucks. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay, I like pee. I'll pee piss on her. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so picture 12-year-old me sitting all crisscross applesauce trying to watch TV, <laughs> big hot bowl of chili in my lap, oh. and a three-year-old little boy just comes and stands in front of you. <laughs> I'm already mad. Move. Trying to watch TV, pulls his tiny little pants down, and starts to piss all over me and inside my bowl of chili inside I can't get to him fast enough to murder him Ugh. Ugh. he takes off running upstairs he's screaming i did it i did it i did it jumps into grandma's lap she's laughing because she doesn't know what's going on i come tearing up the stairs because i'm gonna murder a three-year-old and she says what did you do he said well i peed on her i peed on her <laughs> she says i can't kill him because she told him to I love it. Man, so grandma's just making up all these rules, huh? You could go pee on your sister. No, you can't kill your brother for peeing on you. This is just all these grandma rules. Your grandma's a real character. Was a a character. She's a creator of chaos in that house. God, my boys pee on everything. Oh, yeah, because then she said, aren't you glad I didn't tell him to poop on you? (laughs) Oh, right. I had time to move if he had to poop on me. That's right. Amanda, you're the lucky one. (laughs) 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 Nebraska. Amanda, you're so cute. You talk. I like your accent. Are you from Nebraska originally? You grew up there? Yes. Yes. I've lived here my whole life. Do you have children? Hello? Do you have hello? Oh, do you have children? No, I do not. Okay. I was gonna ask you mom questions like do those bitches do they regulate and they look at you? My neighborhood's very uh judgy the new neighborhood i live in oh yeah oh yeah they look at you oh no oh okay good yeah yeah all right i'm almost 35 and i don't have any but no i love listening to all the mommies on this show you're sweet lady thank you for your story and uh i like that your grandma said to take a piss on people yeah yeah and i guess (laughs) you're lucky that that she didn't say to take a shit on (laughs) yeah thanks dude thank you for the story good grandma phil (laughs) yep yep Gucci gang out okay um you know what's so funny is that I, I, uh, my, my uh, older boy started saying fucking lately, like fucking Julian, like uh-huh. about his little brother, because I say fucking Julian all the time. Does he shorten Julian's name so he goes fucking Jew? You no. Know? <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Yeah, we encourage it. Uh, you know what? Stupid Jew. I thought it'd be funny. <coughs> I would no. love to watch Ellis say crazy shit about Jews. He said, no, no, my God. <laughs> No, but he um he said fucking fucking Julian, 
and uh and tom was like oh like we were both yeah. like calling in the laughter because it's pretty rad when they say stuff like that but like you got to try to not laugh too hard because now you're imprinting that yeah. this is an okay thing to say well here's what i tried and i don't know if it's gonna work or not because it was just yesterday that he said fucking mm -hmm. he said it twice yesterday he was like oh fucking thing and i say that a lot too oh, it's, so it's random yeah it is random. <laughs> so i was like all right i just looked at him calmly and i was like hey buddy fucking is a grown-up word and little kids can't say it. You can say it when you're 16. And he just went, okay. And he hasn't said it since. So I God don't know damn. if it worked. But we don't know yet. Like, wait. Well, if it's not an everyday thing. <laughs> I mean, I remember um, the first bad word that someone taught me. I remember my dad took me to work. And one of his employees taught me the N-word. Oh, boy. And he had... What's that word? What's the word? Nadav. Oh, Nadav. He yeah. taught me my name. The N word. Uh huh. He said the N word. <laughs> and I remember, like, he, the way that he taught it to me is just like, hey, mm. if you want everyone to laugh, just w like yell this out to everyone. It was during a lunch break. And I was mm. like, all you big words get back to work. Oh, my God. And it got a huge laugh. Oh my and God. so then I was just like, oh, this is a funny word. <laughs> and then I apparently was calling everyone the N word for a week. Oh, my God. How yeah. old are you? Uh, I was like five, I think. Yeah, he should have not let that go. Yeah. That was crazy. No, well, yeah, that guy got fired pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> he taught the boss's son the N-word. Oh, my God. Who teaches? The, see Mario. That? Mario Ma teaches, <laughs> teaches their boss's son the N-word. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you realize is that kids learn all that stuff from your house. Like, you're not born a racist. Your parents yeah. have to be like that whole group of people over there are like this right and you have to inherit that which is a trip right yeah it's so trippy yeah i mean i feel like i'm really lucky that a lot of the things that my not my parents i'll say my dad thought yeah. like, <laughs> didn't wash off on me you know yeah my parents were both like all four of them set parents yeah super racist yeah but i remember being like a lot of people from the old country are yeah it's just like it's, <laughs> it's more like yeah it's, it's whatever it's their generation i'm not going to try and change them but I remember by the time I was a teenager being like, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think that all Persians are blah, 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 or all black people are. I'm like, that's not even logical. It's, yeah. not, it's not a logical statement. Yeah. It's not logically possible that <laughs> everybody in a demographic is a certain way. It's not even logically possible, right? Yeah. No, yeah, but that's the thing. It's, it's that so like you just dumb. see one or two and you're like, yep, that's the rule moving forward. The whole, yeah. the whole country is like that. Yeah. God, it's so can't wild. Do that. Can't do that in 2020. No, I'm trying to think what my parents, my mother hated Asian people for some reason. She was very jealous of Asian women. I think it was because, I don't know, she she was very envious of Asian women. Of Asian women? Uh huh. She oh, because they were like always that. stealing her man? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what is it specifically? I'm trying to think. She's like, they're so fucking quiet. And then, you know, like they're... Like she doesn't trust them? Yeah. I've... Always planning. <laughs> <laughs> or just that she perceived them to be, I think, like demure and, you know, weak or something. But I'm like, that's just not... If you ever knew a... You know, Asian women are not all that way. But I think she was resentful because hmm. she wasn't that way. Maybe she wanted to be that way more. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually feel oh, like no. whenever you hate someone or hate something, it's 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 almost always projecting from something yeah. inwards. A hundred percent. Just like I hate this about me, and I see it over there, 100%. and I hate it. That's what the, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. There's so this and that, like, well, because you don't like that in yourself, right? Yeah, it's like you wish you were quiet. Yeah, <laughs> and more of a lady. Yeah. Maybe she's maybe she didn't like that in herself. I don't know. Anyway, all right, who else we got? Let's see. We got hot probs. <laughs> we got Sarah from Portland, Oregon, dealing with her kids. What's oh, going on, Sarah? Sarah. <laughs> Hi. Sarah. From Sup, Sarah. Uh, just a bunch of <laughs> Portland, Oregon. Hey. I love it up there. What's going on? How many kids do you have, Sarah? Two. Two crazy girls. Oh, eight shit. and six. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, what are they doing? They're biting each other. Yeah. I was working from home. They're running in, attacking me. Yeah. I think they're going just as crazy as I am. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So Two it's girls? pretty intense with this whole quarantine. Do you have any space for them to run around? Um, I live in a condo mm. and it's more like a retirement community. Mm. So mm. not really. No. No. Now here's a great trick I learned from Nakia mm. who has four children. Mm. And 
<laughs> it's a really good trick. She goes, okay, we're going to have races. And she takes the kids and goes, who can run the fastest to the end of the courtyard? Or who can run? There's got to be a place for them to run. You've yeah. got to find somewhere. you got to tire them out. Yeah, tire them out. That's the key. Like puppies. <laughs> when you have a puppy, you just got to make them run up and down the stairs. Who can run up and down the stairs the fastest? Yep. On your market set, go. <laughs> and make it a game. Well, <laughs> What do you think? They run on my treadmill and my elliptical, but it just doesn't seem to work. No. No, because that's less fun, probably. Well, and I'll tell you the secret that my Hungarian mother used to say: the children need fresh air, fresh air. And I'm telling you, the fresh air is what makes you tired. Is fresh air, sunshine. I don't know. I know oh you don't God. have sunshine. I'm Oh, you are? See, there you go. So, oh, did so you, you understand the accent. Yes. My mom would say the same thing. <laughs> Fresh air. <laughs> now, I actually teach my sons this in the morning. We open the windows and I say it in my mother's accent. We need fresh air. And my, my Ellis goes, fresh air. <laughs> he does it in the accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and this is how they used to make newborns sleep back in the 1950s. They put you in, the, in your stroller and literally put put these newborns outside in the fresh air and it makes the children nap longer. Mm. So there is something to being outdoors, being in the sun. I, like I said, I know you're in Portland, not a ton of sun, uh, but if you can get those fuckers outside, that's the key. <laughs> that's my theory. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw, can't wait. I've seen another trick too. Go ahead. And that's that, uh, and I hate that this is the second time I'm comparing kids to dogs. Sure. But kids respond very well to fetch. <laughs> <laughs> you could I, I've seen multiple That's friends so of mine silly. they're sitting on a couch and it's almost like the couch is out of you yeah. so they're in the middle of their house like yeah, one yeah, hallway yeah. going this way one hallway going this way they take a ball and they just throw it down one hallway Yeah. kid go runs as fast as they can to go get it bring it back he's like oh okay here we go and then you throw it down the other yeah. hallway and then they go and run do that you do that for 30 minutes and they don't even <laughs> realize that they're getting exhausted used. yeah it's like they don't realize why yeah. you're doing it they just think it's fun. Yeah, yeah. And then they could actually go to sleep at like 7 p.m. or at a reasonable time. 100%. Also, uh, water. Uh, now is summer here in L.A. And I throw I throw the kids in the front lawn and I hand them a hose and they get naked. And that kills about an hour or two in the sun. And then they're tired because they're out in the sun and the heat and stuff. And uh, and that's a good one. Water balloons. Mm. Shit. That exhausts them too. Run around throwing yeah. water balloons. No, there you go. All right, just run those kids, man. Run them. Yeah. Run them in circles. I like the races. Races. Idea. Yeah, just make them race each other. Let's find out who's the fast. It's a decathlon type thing. Does that sound like a plan? Well, you got to give them some candy or something to, to yeah. run after. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. The only thing but then, but then they regain the energy. No, right? no, no. Nadav, your thinking is skewed. Let me it tell is, you. It, here's right, what I is. do. <laughs> yeah. I'm not one of these parents that's anti-sugar, okay? Here's why. If you forbid sugar, you forbid sugar, what happens? They grow up. First thing they're going to do mm. is eat all the sugar in the world and get super fucking fat. Mm. Happened. Or become diabetic. Yeah. Or become diabetic. <laughs> so I'm a huge proponent of treats. Oh. I give sugar. Why? They freak out for about five minutes. You got a massive freak out and then they crash. And then it's your time. Ooh. So that's the secret. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. give them enough sugar. Yeah. Not for a balanced diet, but enough to make them crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're out for how long? Oh, you, then you got yourself at least a half hour of quiet time. Ooh. Yeah. But then are they right back up at like 100%? No. Or are they like kind of groggy? Now afterwards? they're kind of groggy because yeah. they're in a sugar coma. That's when you got to give them like cheese and crackers to stabilize their blood sugar. Mm. But listen, candy in small doses is fine. Let them freak out. Let them crash. Get them out in the fresh air, in the sunshine. This is the only way for children. They need to be outside. Okay, Sarah? <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dos right. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of my life, right? You woke up, you had a nice, healthy, sugary bowl of cereal, and you started your day right. And you could do that when you were a kid, not in your 40s. I mean... I wish I could eat like I did when I was a kid. And now I can with Magic Spoon. It's delicious. Um, I'm trying to cut down on carbs and sugar and anything unhealthy. But Magic Spoon has zero sugar, 12 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. And the flavors are wonderful. I have Magic Spoon for breakfast, and I like the cocoa. And they also have fruity, frosted, 
and blueberry. It tastes amazing. It really is uh, really too good to be true. You're like, am I doing something wrong? Am I allowed to eat this as an adult? Yes, you are. Um, I love it. Try it out. Go to magicspoon.com slash WMMA to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code WMMA at checkout to get free shipping. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money. No questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash WMMA and use the code WMMA for free shipping. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring this podcast. Women and some men out there, I know it's so hard to find the right foundation. Why? Because it can actually make you look older. Sometimes foundation settles into the cracks, into your little marionette wrinkles right here in the eyes. Oh, I hate it. But that's why I love Luminous. Luminous is so easy and uh, it's a four-in-one airbrush system and it's the secret to keeping your foundation it rests on the skin instead of settling and making you look older and more haggard and blotchy. Unlike traditional liquid foundation and powders, which can exaggerate the signs of aging, the Luminous Silk Airbrush System uses 10 times less makeup, which is great. You're saving money on foundation. And its skin-loving silk four-in-one formula combines with your moisturizer, your anti-aging serum, your concealer, and your foundation for flawless younger looking coverage that is right it is so easy to use i know you're saying i don't know i've seen those systems it's the air brushing that looks fancy are you a professional makeup artist christina no i'm not but i have my system i keep it on my makeup uh, uh what should call it desk counter top and i easy peasy lemon squeezy luminous air has a limited time offer for you right now go to trysilk.com slash wmma to get 60 percent off your luminous silk four in one airbrush system that's trysilk.com slash wmma Get smoother, fuller, and more natural-looking foundation coverage. Visit trysilk.com slash WMMA today. Why not? Bluzhnibro. <laughs> Short. Bluzhnibro. See, this is my mother was right about some things in life. Not too many things, but she was right about that fresh air. Kids needs fresh air. Yeah, I mean... Uh, That's it, the old-school European shit. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's uh, what was it? I feel like I, I had some Russian friends in college... <laughs> And the one thing, and I don't know if it's if this spreads to Hungary, but the biggest thing everyone's <laughs> afraid of is a draft in the room. Does that? That's a Jewy thing. It's not a Jewy thing. I think the Jews are worried about the draft. I, it wasn't me. No, <laughs> no, it was the Cold War I'll type tell shit. You. They close it because if you get pneumonia, we're not going to the doctor and you're dying. <laughs> It's the opposite. So uh, Eastern blockers and oh, Norwegian. They're trying to thin the herd. No, you want to sleep in cold. So this is actually, it's counterintuitive, but if you go to like Amsterdam or Norway, they love to sleep in those big feathery, wonderfully heavy uh, blankets, and then they leave the windows open. The fresh air helps you sleep. Uh. So actually, that's a Jewy thing. You guys are worried about dying more, the Jews. Jewy thing. Mm -hmm. All of you, 100% of all the Jews are afraid of catching cold and dying. Yeah, if you could just put us all uh, in a way to to a warmer place, I don't know how we how you transport all of us into a warmer place. Where oh, we like on a train? Is that what you mean? Whichever way, whatever, <laughs> whichever way we could like just a lot of us getting into one place. Where do the Jews love to live? You guys love Boca Raton, Florida. yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I get it. Uh, that's where Jews. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know why we like Florida. I've never visited there. I don't think I'm old enough yet. No, Boca especially. It's all yeah older Jewish people. Yeah, I just remember seeing mostly. Uh, what was the first time I saw it? Like actually, like seen? I think it was the the Meet the Parents sequel. With, yeah. And I saw them in Florida. I'm like, that actually looks dope. I'd love to. It's rad. There. <laughs> Florida's great. Just a lot of island, clear water beaches. Yeah, it's Fuck really yeah, beautiful, dude. and I love um, the Latin, a lot of Latin culture, especially in Miami, yeah, Cubanos, you, you Rican, like oh mm -hmm. shit, yeah, flavors, that. homie. <laughs> I love it, Puerto Ricanos, <laughs> y Peruvian, peruanas. Peruanas? Peruvians, homie. Oh, that's how you say it? Peruana, yeah. Oh. Yeah, for women, for a girl. And then the San Fernando Valley. A lot of Jewish people in the valley where I grew up. In L.A., yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, lots of, lots of J's in the V. J's in the V? <laughs> yeah. And Persians, too. They like it here in yeah, the San they, Fernando Valley. They love it, dude. <laughs> they fucking love this shit. All people love the valley. Come on now. Yeah. 
What else? Who else we got, homie? All right, let's see. Oh, you know what? We're on the topic of relating to foreign parents. Oh. And Drew, you have a question about how to not disrespect your foreign parents? <laughs> yeah, how you doing, Bobby? <laughs> Hi, Gene. Hey, Drew. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my uh, my mom's like Charo, fresh off the boat. Mm. From and, Peru? Uh, She's just Peru. Wanting to see how, uh, just wanting to see how uh, you kind of relate to, uh, you know, using I feel language but they don't really play uh the mental health game very well nah. so let me see what you uh, have well first of all what what country are we talking about she's peruvian no uh she's uh she's a beaner she's a beaner okay <laughs> uh so beaners are mexican is that what we're going with yeah yeah like, what part of mexico uh Ooh, drew can you take us off speakerphone down in Mitchell Con. Michoacan. Okay. Yeah, take us off speakerphone, Drew. Are you there, mommy? Gotcha. Here you go. There you go, James. Okay, so how long has she been in this country for? How Americanized is she? Uh, Well, she came here when she's 19, and she's 55 now. So a while, but kind of still in that mindset. In the mindset of old country, meaning what? You can't go outside Mm -hmm, when it's raining with a cough, otherwise you'll die of pneumonia. Yeah, I mean, my uh, my great aunt still lives in their house, like, you know, old school. Old school. I love it. Does she make tortillas for you by hand? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit's good, right? Beans, frijole, oh. rice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a jam, that's homie. Nice. Mole? Does she do a good mole? <laughs> uh, mole's good, but her, um, what am I trying to think of? Her uh, pasole is the best. Oh, pasole. I like pasole. I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, no, come on, man. You live in um, LA, homie. Okay, yeah, so what's so what's the question? What what's the conflict you're having and I will tell you how to get around it with your immigrant mom. <laughs> so, I'm trying to work on my mental health and trying to call her out when they are being um very emotionally manipulative mm. and they don't play that card. So I'm just wanting to see how you mm. uh, <laughs> would relate and kind of what language <laughs> you would use. Sure. Uh, what's the specific issue? Uh, are you trying to convey your feelings to Wait, her? Are you trying to say <laughs> that they're mentally ill and they're not responding yeah. well to it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're getting it right on the nose. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone's so going to respond. Quarantine. Too, so. yeah. I don't yeah. think yeah. anyone's going to respond to it. I want to hold them back from her life but i also don't want to be controlled by them and their craziness well how old are you drew this is a big question yeah. you're asking okay how old uh, are you 31 okay and you're home right now with the quarantine or what's up you're with them yeah okay uh, yep yeah. and so what's a specific issue you're trying to address with them uh well they actually so we're renting a house from them they say it's our house but um, just they're more in our day to day life. And I'm just trying to, um, call them out and say, you know, Hey, you guys are being emotionally manipulative by, um, doing X, Y, and Z. Well, well, I would on. like to, you know, address that. And then it's best they're saying, Oh, you're, um, I'm married to a therapist. So they're saying, Oh, oh you're analyzing us. You, yeah. You it's know, like, yeah. So you know, <laughs> you know, they don't see their own craziness. So what are they saying to manipulate you? Give me an example. Oh, um, you know, I'm telling my, uh, basically telling my mom, hey, uh, you guys are bringing up this issue uh, with the house. You're not hearing us out um, with what we need. Uh, and I would like for you guys to understand. Like, I don't, I don't have like a, I don't know if that helps or not. Probably not. All right. Listen, I know. I, I Listen. So it's the land. Hold on. It's the landlord situation that like they're having a hard time hearing. Stuff? Yeah. A lot of the landlord oh. situation is just basically kind of overstepping their bounds um, into our day to day life where it's like, hey, but you're renting from I'm them. I'm not trying to disrespect you and not having that. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So I think I'm not trying to. Dis- I think. Oh, yeah. I think step number one is don't rent from your parents. Well, it's too late. Now. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Listen, when you got immigrant parents, you just got to separate as much as you can from them. And then you obviously now this is in a a bizarre you're in a bizarre situation. So, fuck. Listen, these old schoolers don't understand. I feel language. They don't understand the The I statements. uh, (laughs) Just forget about it. Just figure out figure out specifically what you would like to happen. And you got to be as, at least in Eastern Blocker culture, as direct as you can. 
Um, and, and for instance, in my family, rudeness tended to really work. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, because they don't, they yeah. don't, I'm serious because they don't respect feelings. So the I feel language would get me yeah. mocked, ridiculed, mm. and thrown out, essentially. Uh, so if there's something I wanted, I would just have to be extremely direct and be like, this is, you know, I need this or that or the other thing. Um, there is no, there is no, I've, you can't, boo-boo. Sorry. You're just going to have to tippy-toe around them. Yeah. Try to make them as happy and comfortable. You know what I find works with these old schoolers? Bribery. <laughs> I'm serious. What is she like? Uh, time you, with her grandkids, let me, probably. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, time yeah. with my granddaughter. Yeah. Okay. So, here's that. what. So here's what you're gonna do. Yeah. Here's what you're gonna do. You dangle mm -hmm. what they <laughs> want in exchange for what you yeah. want. Does she? Here's what I do. When yeah. my when my mother-in-law comes to visit, you know what I do? I buy panettone and a lot of it. I stock the fridge with. Uh, Pinot Grigio, because I know she likes that. And I play her favorite music all fucking day in the house. So she can't fight with me or fuck with me. And I get her drunk a lot. And it helps. Find out what she likes. You just got to get by and survive, boo-boo. Mm -hmm. We're all in survival mode. You're not going to solve any long-term problems here. I'm sorry. Especially with old schoolers. Yeah. They don't get yeah. this shit. Nah. You just got to slowly start removing yourself from the situation. Yeah. <laughs> try to not upset anyone. And, you know, they respond to actions, not words, it seems like. That's actions, yes. Yeah bribery yeah. manipulation right well thanks mommy yeah good luck sweetie i'm sorry yeah sorry drew good luck man. we love you no no worries hope to see you in addison when you get get a chance oh, or when everything same. goes over girl oh, say yeah. hi to me okay Bye, mommy. Oh, right. bye, thanks june. june i don't know yeah, if we helped them. you i don't know if we helped drew i feel bad i don't know i think i think we steered him along I think I think there, I think we at least brought a piece of information to him that maybe he didn't know before <laughs> you know i just think with especially this gen our generation and if you are immigrant parent stuff it's like they're from another world mm -hmm. they're from another time but that's what it is it's like you know like in the mother country this behavior wouldn't be called overbearing right but in today's society it's it, like when you tell them hey you're being a little overbearing i need some boundaries then they just start like i've had this before where they're like god you're so american oh yeah and then you go yeah i am because you brought me here right because yeah. that's this is where I grew up and this is what we're like. And so when they start doing that stuff, you just be like, okay, well, look, I'm not like you. And then that's when they Forget start responding. It. They're like, oh, okay, this this person was raised in a different way than I was raised. And like at least that's when I started seeing some gears turn and some behaviors change. <laughs> is when you're like, look, you raised me. Like, like don't get upset because I'm like this. You... You Maybe did like this. this. <laughs> I know. But you can't. The Parents thing is, hate hearing that. They hate hearing that. <laughs> Especially old schoolers, old mm -hmm. worlders. There is no fixing them. There is no, like, you really can't communicate. I At least when my parents were so screwy that you can, all you can do is smile and nod and make them happy and bribe them. And I don't know. I, I might be wrong. But. Yeah. I mean, if there's, <laughs> if, if there's qualities, if there's qualities that you like about spending time with your parents, Figure out how to maximize that and eliminate yeah. anything else. Even if it means like the second you hear something that you don't like, just excusing yourself from the from the situation, which I've done before. Yeah. And then yeah. they respond and then they're like, ooh, okay, I see that this is a thing that gets, you know, him to leave. So yeah. we'll stop doing that. Yeah, there's listen, and it's also the receptivity of the parent. There are some parents who are really rational and sane and open to yeah. these conversations. It doesn't sound like that. Like, um, what was his name? Sorry. Uh, Drew. Drew's parents were op like open and, and amenable to that kind of stuff. You just right. have to we gauge just, that. We don't know how you old know. school they are. Fuck, man. Yeah. You just got to take gauge them it. You got to try and read the room and hope for the best, right? Yeah, and you got to just take people where they're at, where their capabilities lie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know Dr. Drew has this fantasy of me reuniting with my own dad. Yeah. But I don't think it can happen because I don't think my, I don't know. It's really like how much abuse am I willing to take? Right. I feel like both of you probably <laughs> aren't ready for that yet, right? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it really is. I mean, would like, it be good content? Sure. Are we forcing something here? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> I just, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing to deal with it yet. With yeah. The amount it's of It's traumatic. Annoyance. Yeah. It's traumatic. Like, I'd be just as traumatized <laughs> if it's just like, yeah, I haven't spoken to this parent in a couple of years. And it's like, hey, why don't we get you guys together and film it? It's like, mm, let's try without cameras first. I'm going to order Zanku chicken. Okay. I'm just going to reorder what I did last time and hope you guys eat it. Sure. Zolo, you can take the rest home. <laughs> Do you want to take another call? 
I do. But hold on. I want to talk about parent stuff for a minute okay. more. Because I like this topic. Yeah. Let's talk about my dad. So let's yeah. say, let's say, because I was talking about it with my shrink, and mm-hmm. I was like, if we reunite, it's like you're hitting your head against a brick wall. Because I can keep putting up those boundaries we were discussing earlier of like, hey, if you do this, I do that. And then you know they're boundary steppers. Immigrant parents are boundary steppers. That's what they specialize in. Mm-hmm. Ignoring your needs, denying your identity and your own personal stuff. Now, here's a question, though. Sure. Is this the, so far, is this the longest period that you've kind of had where you've not spoken to your mm-hmm. dad? Yeah, yeah. We had this falling out once uh, after college, yeah. Okay, how long was that period for? Uh, probably like a year, yeah. Okay, so I, I think you're past a year <laughs> at this point, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he knows it's serious. He's like, shit, I haven't seen this since college. Yeah. You know, so he knows this isn't nothing. Yeah. And so maybe, like, if, and if this is something you want, I'm not trying to force you. Sure, anything. sure, sure. But if, if you do want to reopen the relationship with your dad, being like, look, homie, so stressful. I miss you. I, I know that I know. Th- <laughs> sorry, what? I, I, sorry. You know what? Sorry, I was just I went to auto. <laughs> I went to autopilot there. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, hey, Dad, you're a piece of shit, but no, I want no. my grandkids. <laughs> no, but I mean that's probably why you want to reconnect. Is because you want your grandkids to know no. the granddad, right? No, that's the All worst right, what, argument. Okay, you know what? Let me. Re- <laughs> what do you want here, Christina? I don't. <laughs> I think that argument is is cancer when you go. But my grand my my children need to know their their grandparent. Like, mm-hmm. no, they don't. Not really. Not if they're not bringing something positive. So, so then, I mean, if you don't want to reconnect that, I'll like tell if, you, if why. you don't have a reason I'll to. tell you the why. The, the only why is because like when my mom died and you get the phone call and then you're like, ma, they're cunts. Now I got to go through their fucking apartment and I got to do this. And then it gets, I just don't want to get the phone call again that they're just dead. And mm-hmm. then I haven't, you know what I mean? Like, but, ugh. but I mean, you're gonna, but that, I mean, how about this? The phone call is going to happen though. You, yeah, no, you just want to be in a better place when that phone call. Yes. Happens. Th- like we're not like actively warring, I guess, or actively not speaking. Right. That we would just be in a neutral place. That's the goal. What if I just, you send... just don't want to be on bad terms when they go. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I need a full relationship because I don't think that's going to, it's not possible. Like it, how about like a thoughtful text? Hey, dude. <laughs> hey, dude. So, like, I know Christmas is coming up and you're not invited, no. No. <laughs> but Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's a disaster. Okay, all right. Next call. No, see that, call. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, you definitely need to talk to your shrink about this. I don't think yeah. I could walk you through this. <laughs> no, you're, you're even more messed. Yeah, I mean, I have a very conflicting, like, internal stuff going on all the time with my relationship. So it's like... yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I could. Uh, <laughs> like that's well, that's the thing. Well, I think what's interesting is like, how do you reconcile a relationship with a parent where you're like, I'm not so that sure. That you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so complicated. See, but then also, if the reason that you want to have a relationship is so that you don't feel like you're on bad terms when they go. Yeah. Then do you really want a good relationship with that? Like, wait, what do you mean? Do I? Because, I mean, if the only reason is that you don't want to be fighting with them before, before yeah. they die, then is it actually something that you want? Because that is kind of like a, it's, I mean, I don't want to, I don't think the, I don't know how to articulate this because I, I don't think it's a selfish reason to do it, but it's. Yeah, it's so totally selfish. It's so that I don't feel guilty. Right. No, it's, it is selfish. It's just so that I'm not the bad guy. But you're not the bad guy. I know. I'm not the bad guy now. Yeah. Because like Christina, it's, it's not that like. Hey, I did this thing to my dad and I can't face to see him again. Like that's not oh, what happened here, you right, know? Right, it's right. something that he did and you feel guilty that because of his actions, right. that's keeping him from, you know. Well, I do want to be the bigger person cuz like the advice I just gave Drew was like, "Hey, you just have to accept that they are who they are and you take what you can." But so I like, you am did. I able to I do that? You, no, but I think you did accept who they are and I you're know. like, "I don't want any of that." <laughs> <laughs> I accept you are, and I don't like it. Yeah. I had to change my mind. Which is a like, move. You know, it's a, move. a, it's a decision. Know. Like, and, and that's know. the thing, though. Like, it's eliminate toxicity from your life at all costs. I know. And that's what you've uh, done. You're, uh, pres- you're preserving the quality of your life. I know. So what you're saying is... You shouldn't feel guilty about this. I don't have to make up with my dad, is well, what you're saying. Well, if, if you know Wait. that toxicity comes with a relationship with your dad... It does, yeah. And can I Then t- do you need it? And can I tell you something though? But you giving me permission not to have to do it 
I felt a wave of relief wash over me, and that's how I know it's the right thing right now. You're welcome, Christina. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm serious, because until someone, like, you know when someone says the thing, and you go like, oh, that that feels internally, ah, that brought calm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, that's, I feel like that's, that's always been my motto, is never light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. And if you need Ooh, to. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. If, if you it's need a to, don't, it's a don't. Do, it's if a, it's a doubt, it's a don't. Yeah. Because if it's like, yeah, you could bring someone a little mild joy. Yeah. But if you're torturing yourself oh. in the process, is it worth it? I like the saying. Yeah. Don't light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. To keep other people warm. I love this. Where did you get that saying? Uh, I definitely didn't make it up. I heard it somewhere and I was just like, that's the shit right there. That's right. I could, because that's, a great saying. that's how I would be for like the majority of my life in the, in the first part. I'd always try and, you know, and it comes from being like just a good host, I think yeah. is. You know, you want everyone to have what they need, even if it means you need to work a little extra hard to give them what they need. Ooh. And then you realize, fuck that, they could get it themselves. Well, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> you guys know where the kitchen is. Yeah, why like, am I making guacamole yeah, every five why seconds? Why the fuck do my <laughs> knees hurt when you guys leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting uh, word choice is host. Mm -hmm. You're the host to a parasite. Like literally those people who just glom on and right. suck you're fucking... And they don't say thank you. No! Fuck you, Doug. <laughs> Why don't you thank yourself, homie? <laughs> well, here's another paradoxical thing. If you yeah. don't accept your parents for who they are and you don't accept fully and embrace their limitations, right? You end up hating... Like we were talking about at the beginning of this episode, you end up hating the stuff in them that you don't like, which is actually in you. So you end up hating yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is far more. So now you're, it's the internal parent, as my therapist likes to say, that's really what's the whole problem. It's not the, that they exist in the world for real. It's that it's internalized, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. You can't talk to them without thinking of the ways that they fucked you up. Right. Or just, yeah. Yeah. Or their messaging that somehow, I'm not saying like it's their fault even. I'm not blaming. I'm just saying, like, it just happens. Yeah. And now you're, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah, this is just what I'm like, and there's parts <sighs> of it that I don't like. Okay, you know? how about this? Yeah. Let's, I'm going to say some positive qualities about my dad, and this way I will accept both the good and bad in him. Okay. I'm being serious. Okay. okay let's go, yeah. go along. Ready? Okay. Here's what I love about him. Okay. Charismatic. Great. To the umpth degree. Yeah. He brings entertainment to a party. He is the party. Okay. He's a great dresser. Mm -hmm. I mean, homeboy's got no, wait, flair. Actually, hold on. So when you say that, uh, like, is it that you recognize that he brings entertainment or does he entertain you? He's the life of the party. But do you agree that he's the life of the party where you're like, I'm enjoying him being the life of the party also? Oh, I know what you're saying. Or you're like, is, this is just what he does. No, I think he genuinely is a great, he's funny and he's a great storyteller. Mm-hmm. And he's really and like antisocial, and it makes me laugh. That <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know how you guys are always like, look when on your mom's house when I say some weird shit, and you guys are like, what? But uh -huh. then I'll make the point, and you'll go like, oh, okay, that's my dad. That's okay. him being like, no, this is fucked up because this is, uh, you know, the Saudis or blah, blah blah or whatever the fuck it is he's saying, and uh -huh. then he'll make sense, and you're like, oh, that was actually kind of right. So I like that. He's a good driver and he's self-made. He's a good, wait. He's a good driver. He's, he's a, a good, good driver. driver. Where the fuck? That's he's a really good driver. That's a thing you like about him? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you why. He gets from A to B every time. He does. <laughs> he's a skilled, he used to have really good cars. He had a lot of Jaguars growing up okay. when he was a kid. And he would fucking floor it and like, and it was fun. And he could drive drunk, hella drunk. And he was really good. And that's what you liked. <laughs> that's what you liked. About. Okay, I'm starting to see <laughs> some Stockholm syndrome type stuff. Just a little. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll, and I'll tell you what I admire most about my father. Okay. Self-made AF. Punk as fuck. Mm -hmm. When he's 19, he leaves his country of origin, Hungary. He escapes with my mother, 19 to 20 years old. They come to Canada with nothing. He works himself up from fucking nothing in another country. And that's that to me is like endless respect, mad mm. respect, punk as fuck. That that ethic will always stay with me. That like, fuck you, I'm going to make it happen. And there you go. 
So there you go. Mad respect. Okay. What, name one thing you like about your dad. Go ahead. Let's see if we can do it. Mm-hmm. When we go to a restaurant, he orders half the menu. Like he's just like, we'll take this side today. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, it was it, it was pretty rad when you go when you go to a restaurant with someone for the first time. They're like, "Whoa, I've never seen anyone make that move before," and everyone always thinks that he's joking. But he's like, "No, no, legit, we'll take all the appetizers." I kind of like that. It's a cool move, and then you just have appetizers for dinner. That's dope. I've never even heard. I didn't even know you could have permission to do something. Yeah, I mean, well, every time that we've done that, <laughs> like no one else knew you could do that either. That's dope. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. So he's really good at ordering at restaurants. That's the thing. I, <laughs> that's probably the coolest Wait. thing about my dad. <laughs> my dad's a good driver when he's drunk, and your dad's a good orderer. Yeah, at restaurants. my dad's really good at ordering food. <laughs> <laughs> These two should hang out. Wait, where's your dad? Uh, he's in LA now. Okay. Yeah. Well, shit. Um, we, we should hook them up. Sure. They could go to lunch, get God, hammered. And I dad think that this home. would make our dads worse. Like, I think <laughs> I think your dad's going to pick up new shit that you hate, and my dad's going <sighs> to pick up new shit that I hate. Pick up new shit? What do you mean? Like, the things that you that you thought, like, that everything's okay with your dad. Like, everything that my dad does that's fucked up that your dad doesn't do yet. Oh, right. He's going to oh, start right. learning it, and you'll be like, whoa, dad, where's all this racism coming from? It's like, oh, are you hanging out with Nadav's dad some more? <laughs> <laughs> Like they're bad influences. Yeah, exactly. They're just yeah. going to influence each other negatively. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right. Let's take one last call. And okay. then we'll... Who, who we got? Uh, thank you for calling in, you guys. Yeah. I really appreciate it's so it. Fu- uh, it's always so fun when we do this stuff. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. We're, uh, we're going to try and end on a strong note. And we got Kat from Anaheim about manipulating husbands and children. Hey What's now. up, Kat? What up, Anaheim? Disneyland. Whoop, whoop. Kat? We lost Kat. Oh, Kat. Hey, sorry. Oh. hey I'm here. Oh, oh we got Kat. No, <laughs> hey, Kat. How's it going? I've had me on hold for like three years, so I'm I didn't sorry, know. sorry, here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. This is just, it's how she goes. Oh. Thank you. Thanks for hanging in, Kat. It's what, all right. It's all right. What can I do for you? What you got? So I really enjoyed your episode the other day where you're talking about ways we can manipulate our husbands. Mm, mm-hmm. Good. With back rubs and the like. And I was thinking maybe we could talk about ways that we manipulate our kids and give each other some mom hacks. Mm. Mm. Do you have some to suggest, Kat? I mean, I have some. Obviously, there's the basic ones. The basic mm-hmm. ones like <laughs> when you don't want to play with a toy. Oh, the toy is sleeping or the toy is broken. <laughs> or you can go next level. You can go next level, and in Anaheim, we have um, a lot of ice cream trucks that come around, and they come around daily, yeah. and I've told my kids that, oh, we can only get them on Fridays because it goes by address. <laughs> <laughs> so we hear them every day, oh, it's Thursday, we can't get ice cream today, oh, shit, it's, it's not Friday, it's not our day. So That's good. That's, that's one of the ones, and obviously me and all my other friends, we always talk about that we convince our kids to do shit we don't want them to do. I love like, it. for instance, another trick that I have is um, I'll freeze fruit, like yeah. raspberry or blueberry, and I'll tell my kids that and they'll... Uh-oh. Uh oh, Cat, we got a... Kind of like Pavlog dog. We lost you. Yeah, we lost you for a second. What, what was your trick about uh, using the, the fruit, the, blue, the frozen fruit? So I'll tell my kids no. our... Uh, mm are candies i'll freeze them Uh, and then when they ask to have them i'll keep them myself and i'll act like they're the best thing in the entire world like no you can't (laughs) they're so so good yeah and eventually they end up thinking that raspberries are candy Uh uh-huh i call medicine candy amoxicillin (laughs) i'll be like who wants their candy (laughs) (laughs) shit (laughs) i mean you guys do what you all right, we got. I'm sorry, yeah, we got to hang up we on got, you, Kat. We got, we got to drop it. It's sorry, yeah, sorry you're cutting Kat. out. But I, but I like, I like those hacks. I mean, those are good. I, like I, and I've said this before, <laughs> but the possum hack is so fucking good. Wait, it, which one's that one? So you ask your kids if they want to play possum, <laughs> and then you just put them in. And the, the, the answer is yes. You put them in a room. You turn the lights off. You close the blinds. And you're like, all right, you got to act like a possum, and whoever the first person to move is loses. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then they just kind of kind kind of evolves into nap time. It's the quiet game. <laughs> yeah, it's the quiet yeah, game, but you call it possum, so they don't. <laughs> They're a little, it's a little more deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Po possum game. Yeah. Back when I was a summer camp uh, counselor, a summer camp counselor, we played that literally every day. Kids <laughs> never caught on. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> possum's the best. And we're like, yeah, it's our favorite also. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Well, here's a hack I learned. Um, Excuse me. God, it's so disgusting when yep. you cough like that. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, here's what I learned. So uh, my, my older one is afraid of monsters. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of monster talk. He's afraid of spiders getting into the house. And you can't really reason with the kid and be like, there's no such thing. I've tried the, well, mommy is very powerful and strong and they're afraid of mommy. So they'll never come get you. Ooh. And spiders, I already killed them all today. I spent this morning killing them all. There you coming. go. But here's what I do. I go, you want some spray? I'll give you a magic spray. This is monster spray. And this is a uh, spider spray. And you spray this and I give him like, just like a plastic bottle full of like scented water or like, you know, lavender water or nice. some shit. And I'll be like, dude, just spray this. And he's like, what's in this? And I'm like, well, it's mommy's love and it is so powerful. It'll, it'll get rid of anything that I scares I love you. this idea. Mm -hmm. And he believes it. So yeah. it's, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. These kids, they'll believe anything you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking gullible. <laughs> Dumb fucking kid. <laughs> Stupid fucking kids. No, but I, I I love that trick. Right? Plus, mm -hmm. it's like, it's sweet. It's like, oh, your mom loves you. And that added touch of yeah. adding a little scent in there and being yeah. like, it's mommy love that gets rid of the moms. Because then it, it creates another false sense of security, which yeah. they need nonstop of as their kids. Yeah. So that's an easy one. I do bribe him with ice cream. Uh, oh, here's a good hack you can do to bribe them. You can buy tiny cones. They're little mini ice cream cones. They're about the size of a baby. They're perfect for baby hands. Mm -hmm. And I get them from the store. And uh, whenever I want to take a nap while Ellis is watching a movie, if he lets me sleep, I think I've mentioned this on the prior episode, I'll give him a tiny cone. Yeah. And that's bribery. And that's a good one, too. I'll give you an ice cream. And they're oh, little. Yeah. They're like tiny. It's not going to freak him out too bad. That's always good. Um, yeah, that's all I got for Yeah, you. so bribery and lies. I think it works pretty uh, neat. Oh, that's what childhood is. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Bribery and lies. I'm trying to think of other good ones. Oh, you know, uh, yeah, cartoons. If, hey, you're not going to be able to watch a cartoon if you don't sit still and eat. That's a huge thing. Cartoons mm -hmm. are everything in our house. Hell yeah. I don't know. That's it. I think those are pretty solid tips. Yeah. Solid, solid so. mom hacks to end the show with. I, <laughs> I think. Bri uh, briberies and lies. I know. <laughs> I feel like we've covered so much. We covered dad talk, mm -hmm. immigrant talk, pissing on people. Mm -hmm. Like we did everything. We covered a little bit of everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, buy my main mommy shirt. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, stay inside. Stay blah 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 blah. <laughs> Gladys is right. I hate all like. I was approached to do like, hey, do you want to do a short, funny video for this thing? Do you want to do? And I'm like, no, no, I think people are. It's enough. I don't think no. And nobody wants to see it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to oversaturate this shit. We're just going to work on our stuff. How about everyone <laughs> just shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just wash your hands. Stay home and shut the fuck up. Yeah. That's the new mantra. Yeah. Just be fucking cool. Be cooler than this. I know. <laughs> Wasn't that awful, that video with the singing of the John Lennon? I think that set the the tone. Like, imagine all the people. And I was like, this is the beginning of the end of people thinking they're helping, of celebrities telling right. us how they feel. Well, yeah, because, like, I mean, oh I, know, I know that as soon as the Safer at Home orders was uh. called in, I was just like, what the fuck does Gal Gadot think about this? <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my mind. Right. What does Gal think? <laughs> I got it. And like they, celebrities are like telling us their feelings all the time about it on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, and divorce and announcements. Hey, how about you shut the fuck yeah, up? <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you complaining about, Alec Baldwin, in your mansion with your 5,000 children and your hot wife? Like, yeah, as hard as this is for you, it's not harder than a normal person. Right. <laughs> Dick swear. Swab, like yeah. you, what about like the FedEx person? Whenever the I the FedEx, whenever <laughs> I drive by, and I see like a FedEx delivery person, mm -hmm. I'm like that motherfucker has the hardest job yeah. right now, or the nurse, or the doc. Like those people need to be bitching on Instagram. The ones, the ones that essentially <laughs> cannot be locked up right. with their family and kids. Yeah, the ones that are being forced to still go to work. Yeah, 
and make sure that you're getting your shit. You Dude, know, you know, every, way harder, yeah, way worse, way worse. Even the Instacart delivery, like whoever buys my groceries for my lazy ass, so I don't have to. I'm like, thank you so much. Yeah, fat thank tip you. for you. Yeah, yeah, air day. Yeah, I've been, I've been like ever since the 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 safer at home order. I've been. Anyone that brings Postmates, anyone that oh brings anything, God. it's just like, yeah, homie, the, I'm changing the bracket that we're tipping you in because yeah. you're putting yourself out there. You have to. They're the ones that should be doing those videos. They're literally risking their health for like $1? No, no. dude. You're getting $5. Bro, $5, dude. Anyways, on that note, you guys... Um, Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Stay the fuck home. I don't mm-hmm. know. No, and, yeah, that uh, was cool. I, I, I think that should be your new side. That's my... Yeah, guys. So remember, moms, shut the fuck up. Stay the fuck home and be cooler than you are. <laughs> that's right. Just be cool. A, what happened to just being cool? Everyone's got to share their feelings all the time. Just shut the fuck up and be cool. All right. Until next time, moms, stay cool. Thank you, Nadav, for uh, assisting on Oh, no problem. Board. Thank you for and, having me. Yeah, you're the best. I love you, buddy. All right, later. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at?